welcome to this episode of The Gunman. In this video, I'll be taking you guys through what a 3M sun gun is and how to use it, and I'll also be uh, showing you guys uh, the paintwork. I've decided to give this a bit of a tidy up and make it look all brand new again. Um, so, basically, what it is, it's primarily a color matching light, however, it can be used for uh, spotting paint defects and stuff like that, say if you're working in a poorly lit uh, environment when you're trying to do some paintwork, you can take it in and uh, inspect over your paintwork. So it has a color corrective globe on it, um, so it's the best for color matching. Uh, it gives you a 100% uh, natural light, whereas some of the fluorescent globes that you have um, throughout workshops and even in your spray booths, they can throw off green and red tinges and can give you false readings when you're trying to do colour matching which is um, basically what this gun will eliminate. So this one here is the original Sun Gun, the Sun Gun 1. Um, they're actually quite well known for having a poor battery life. Once you've had them for a couple of years um, you'll probably only get 15 minutes maximum out of your battery and then you'll have to recharge it. So a lot of people used to have sort of a backup pack, a backup battery um, but I've only ever had one and what I ended up doing was taking this battery pack here down to Battery World which you have here in Australia and they're actually able to repack it for me which is a big part of the reason you see me masking this bottom part up because there's probably a bit of info in there that the uh, guys from the battery shop are going to need a bit of info on the battery there so it cost me $80 to get that repacked it beats buying a new battery pack for probably $200 give or take. Um, these things also uh, can be made yourself. Uh, I've heard that there's some YouTube videos on how to make your own out of a cordless drill. Um, the guy, other guy that I work with, the other painter here, he was thinking of doing it. Um, but then we ended up deciding, because I bought this for $750 originally, he ended up getting his for about $550. And then, yeah, for the for the possibility of having something that may not even may or may not work if you wire it up uh, poorly or something like that, you're probably spending a couple of hundred dollars on materials and the time that you've spent to do it. He just ended up deciding I'm as well just go and get the proper sun gun. So he's gone and got the sun gun too, which does have a improved uh, battery life on it. Um, that basically the only functional difference in it is that uh, he doesn't have the light on the top. The, you might have noticed on the very top there's a little light that will turn orange when the battery power is running low. Um, so the Sung on 1 has that, the Sung on 2 doesn't have that. But it's definitely got an improved battery life. Um, I do recommend if you were to buy one of these, first charge, just let them charge up overnight, a really good charge and then run it uh, dead flat for the first use and that will sort of set the memory on these batteries. So you saw me do all the prep work, I, I, I washed it down with a bit of thinners first, I then uh, gave it a bit of a scuff down with some 500 grit uh, and you just saw me masking it all up, obviously extremely careful because they are a delicate uh, tool these things, I don't usually let the apprentices just grab them because yeah it's mine, I spent $750 on it and for all I know they'll go and grab it and drop it and put it back up there and say oh I didn't do it so yeah I just um I let the tradesmen use it if they need to and it's just a very delicate tool so that globe could smash quite easily um which is also why I decided to mask it up I didn't want to um yeah you know, I didn't want to pull it out I just had a quick look at it I'm like yeah it didn't want to come straight out so I just thought I'd just leave it in there rather than running the risk of smashing it on the way out um, and they have a fan in the back of them to keep the globe cool so that's why I'm just sort of I don't want to get too much paint in the back there I didn't want to block that fan up or anything as it turned out it was totally fine um, so that's just one thing to be careful of if you do decide to give your sun gun a paint job um, yeah the other difference in between the sun gun two they're sort of more of a darker like a black type gray dark gray color whereas these ones came out in that light gray However, as you can see now, we're able to give them a good paint job, and this thing looks a million dollars when it's all finished. Um, so it's a candy colour I'm painting this. I painted a brand new Mazda 3 front bumper bar. It's one of my more popular videos, so you guys may or may not have seen that video. And I was actually left over with a bit of that colour. I just had enough to paint my sun gun, so that was the ground coat I was putting on, and now you're seeing me put my candy on. You'll, uh, you'll see after I get my first coat on, I have a look inside the pot because I 
think I'm about to start running out of the candy, but it was just enough to get this thing looking real nice. Hang around to the end, and I will give you guys a look at the sun gun, actually, as I'm using it to color match this same color when I was actually color matching the uh, bumper bar that I had to spray. And you'll be able to see how one coat to two coats of the candy will change the color. Basically what it does is it deepens up the red in it and it just makes it pop that little bit more. So um, it was about 30 degrees this day so I decided I didn't even really want to wait in between coats. hope my boss isn't watching this because I was painting this during work. I was, oops, did I say that out loud? Nah, he's pretty cool. He wouldn't mind. Um, so here you go. I'm just um, doing the Duke Zone Plus 2K clear. Just two coats of that. Put one coat on. Give it a couple of minutes. At 30 degrees, you only really need two, three minutes. Bit of fast hardener in there. And um, yeah, put your next coat on. I just left it overnight. No need to bake it. However, if you wanted to bake it, there would be no issues with that. Uh, the gun can uh, get hot and you won't find any dry. It's not going to melt or anything like that. So. As I say, just um, yeah, make sure it's all masked up nice, um, so it's not going to blow over when when you're doing the paintwork, because you want to get the pressure up nice, get a nice finish on it, so you can see it's not really moving at all, and just careful on that back area where the fan is um, with the clear, you don't want to stick up that that fan too much. So that's pretty much it. There's um a little bit of a finishing touch I decided to do to it just to make it look real nice. That's the gun I used, the Pro Light with the TE20 on it. Awesome gun. It's my everyday gun for clear coat. And there was a couple of little stickers that go on the very front. It's sort of a sticker with a hand on it, and I think it's to do with the heat. Showing you not to grab the grab the glow because it's warm. So I decided to put them back on, which you'll see back on in a minute. So this is just a bit of 2K black. I didn't even sand that. I just touching it straight up. Just got a bit of 2K black straight out of the can. Put a bit of uh, hardener in it, a bit of accelerator, touch up brush straight over and it looks real nice. So you're left with a gloss finish. And it breaks it up a bit too. So the entire gum, if you see something, the entire thing looks red. It just sort of doesn't look right. So I decided to do this trigger. Just neat, keeping inside the edges. No need to mask it off unless you've... Uh, had a big night on the piss the night before you might have some shaky hands and you might want to um put some masking tape over there but i don't drink anymore so i don't seem to have those problems <laughs> um yeah as you can see i'll put that sticker on the front the 3m uh the 3m logo on the side that lights up when the gun goes on and i'm real happy with how it's come up now i look forward to doing some color matching with it every day now You can see the light there, you can see I put that sticker back on. I'll take it outside and give you guys a look at the um, the awesome can candy colour that it is. And just to finish it off, I'll give you guys a look at how we use it to match a colour. Pretty awesome colour as you see. Really pops really nice in that sun and I just scraped through with having enough. So. And this is uh, a look at how we actually use it to match a colour. So I'll just, um, that's just going to replicate, um, yeah, just the natural sunlight. So it's got two, two settings on it. You pull it once, you've got sort of a lower light, and you pull the trigger again, it'll give you a, a brighter light. So sometimes it's good to check it in both lights. And when I'm colour matching, I just go check it to the rear bar and say, because I just did this front bumper bar, so... Um, the one on the left is two coats of the candy, the one on the right is three, so you can see how it changes the colour. And um, I always like to have a good look around and check it <clears throat> on different angles, get your eye on the different angles, the tops of the doors, the bottoms, and just have a bit of a look around. So you can really see the difference that the extra coat of candy made. Um, it really deepened it up. So check out these couple of links at the end if you haven't already seen them. Thanks again for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.